been my experience that some students approach the subject of stability with some trepidation, a bit of mystery, something that's a little bit scary to approach in comparison with some other subjects that we cover here. But it must be understood, the fundamentals of stability, the understanding of the forces and moments that keep your vessel upright and on top of the water is absolutely essential to your ship's safety and you have a major responsibility to understand it. It's really not that difficult and in fact it's quite an interesting topic. Unfortunately many vessels in recent years in Australian near coastal waters have suffered a loss of stability. They have capsized without any breach of the hull and whilst the circumstances leading to those capsizes are quite varied, ultimately the ships have lost stability. This has led to tragic loss of life so I do hope you'll look at this video, pause where necessary and study the basic concepts as we work through them and we look at some of these case studies that have occurred. This thing's going over. This thing's going over. Yep, see ya. Wow. I better go help these guys. Those of you studying here in Australia, coxswains, master less than 24 metres, master less than 35 metres, it might interest you to know, just before we get going, that we look at vessels in two ways. We look at them longitudinally, and we look at them in a transverse cross-section in this manner. So longitudinal stability, generally known as trim, is the study and understanding of how your vessel sits in the water in a longitudinal axis. A transverse axis like this, small vessels, very, very important. How the vessel rolls, her ability to return to the upright position in this axis is transverse stability. Now coxswains and master 24s, this is the by far the bulk of uh, your studies. Master 35s, you'll go into it in a fair bit more detail because you'll be concentrating more on loading conditions that affect the fore and aft aspect of the vessel, the trim, the difference between the draft forward and the draft aft. Before we can talk about what keeps a vessel upright on top of the water, well, we need to understand how the vessel's staying on top of the water in the first place. We need to understand the principle of flotation, Archimedes' principle, if you like. But to do so, we need to first understand some terms and the relationship between them some basic terms. The first one is mass. Mass is the amount of matter in a body, the amount of stuff in that given volume of the body. Uh, what have I got here? I've got a drill. This drill probably weighs about half a kilogram, but notice I said the word weight. Weight is in fact what I can feel. Weight is the force of gravity acting on the mass, the mass being 0 0.5 kilograms. All right, so mass and weight, sometimes we need to change those words, but if I took this up into the space station, for example, of course, it continues to have mass, the stuff that makes it, up, makes it up, but it won't have any weight. It won't have the effect of gravity on it. So that's mass. The next one oops, is volume. Volume is simply the space occupied by or the space contained within an object. And we're going to use the unit of measurement of cubic metres to measure volume. And these are two very important things because the relationship between those, in fact the relationship between mass divided by volume equals its density. Okay its density. Now it just so happens that the density of fresh water if we took one cubic meter of fresh water it actually weighs a ton. One ton. So you can see from the maths that one divided by one of course equals one not very scary maths there. So the density of fresh water is one. Notice I said density because I'm going to introduce a new term now. We're going to add the word relative density. Sometimes referred to as specific gravity, but it's the same thing. 
relative density is perhaps a good one to start with though because it is the density of something relative to that of oops, fresh water. Remember, the density of fresh water is one. We compare everything else, everything else to it. Some things are gonna be lighter, less dense than water, and some things are gonna be heavier. Those things will be more dense than fresh water. Here's an example in a glass. We just hold that up against the whiteboard there. You can see clear layers of fluid. The one on the bottom, fresh water, density of one. The one in the middle, the darker color there, lubricating oil, probably a density of, I don't know, 0.86, something like that. And up the top there, we've got some diesel oil, which is lighter again, perhaps 0 0.76, 0 0.77, something like that. So if this, if I had a ton of fresh water, a cubic meter of fresh water, I should say, it's going to weigh a ton. If I had a cubic meter of lubricating oil, it's going to weigh around about 830 kilograms. And if I had a cubic meter of diesel, it's probably going to weigh around about 760 kilograms. Now, 